Uh, my name is Crystal Tubles. I'm Oglala Lakota, Northern Cheyenne. I think it's a pivotal moment in time and I think that it is very important for us to all be here in this space because it can actually shift the way um, Hawaiian, Native Hawaiian folks are experiencing oppression on their own lands and so I think this is a moment that we can get beyond that and that we can actually start pushing back and change that and to be able to start exerting our rights um, as the original stewards of these lands to these lands. I have relatives that I've made in uh, Kanaka Mali that like showed up for us at Standing Rock and so because of those relationships that were built and because they came and stood with us in my relationship to them when they put out the call and I got phone calls that this was happening um, I had already said if things happen I'll be there and I'll show up because that's what we do as relatives is we show up for each other and as original stewards of whether it's these lands or whether it's lands in you know the United States so-called United States we have to continue to stand together it's important that we do that we don't we don't win without each other and so when this I knew this was happening um, it did it brought up feelings of Standing Rock and it brought up feelings of needing to be here to support and be on the ground um, yeah to just support however I can <laughs> There's some similarities. I think Standing Rock was really massive. Um, and, but one thing that I think is really beautiful here is that the cohesion of the people and the ability to really work together. And to me, that's just really beautiful and really grounding and how grounded in prayer this whole movement right now is. I mean, we do see the same response from the state and, you know, the state uses the same playbook and the same template to respond to indigenous people's resistance, right? And so we do see that the use of like declaring a state of emergency, the use of riot gear, SWAT teams, LRAD, bringing out the National Guard, we see that same template. I mean, I think I just want to encourage people to continue to stay in prayer and continue to stay grounded to our connection to the land. Um, you know, we see major uprisings right now of indigenous resistance all over the world. It's not just happening here. I mean, we've seen it in Puerto Rico. We're seeing it down on the border in so-called United States. We're seeing it um, with organizing happening around suicide rates with Native youth. Um, we're seeing it in Cuba. We're seeing it in all these different places, right? And we are all, um, you know, the original stewards of these lands. And so I think it's important for us to continue to stay in prayer, continue to stay connected to the land, and continue to stand together because we don't we don't win without each other and to me that's really important is that we continue to be there for each other <laughs> Uh, good afternoon. Once again, I'm Dan Dennison, the Senior Communications Manager for the Department of Land and Natural Resources, and I'm speaking on behalf of the Mauna Kea Communications Team. 
Today an unofficial crowd estimate is between 800 and 1200 people. There have been no arrests or injuries reported, we're happy to report. Law enforcement continues to make uh, preparations to allow for the lawful transport of construction equipment up onto Mauna Kea. They continue meeting with all agencies to determine the next steps. They're making sure that appropriate resources are in place to handle the size of any crowd that has gathered now or in the future. I want to remind everyone that law enforcement officers are members of the community and are committed to doing their jobs. At the end of the day, they want to make sure that everyone here and throughout the community is safe and secure. There have been claims uh, today and in the past that the state has approved the use of excessive force. There is no such thing as a state agency or state leader approving the use of excessive force. This and rhetor rhetoric like this that the state is preparing for quote unquote war is being used on traditional and social media. It is dangerous and false. No actions by law enforcement since the protest started support any of these assertions. For safety and security purposes, we cannot comment, as you know, on the operational planning of law enforcement activities. I know that we've provided this answer uh, quite regularly to the media and we're not trying to be ev evasive. There are obviously legitimate reasons for law enforcement not providing operational details. For instance, it would compromise their ability to ensure the safety of everyone here. We have to focus on decreasing vulnerabilities while trying to convey essential information to everyone involved. Access to Mauna Kea Access Road remains closed for safety reasons uh, from the point behind, behind me and up to the mountain. And as you all know, the emergency proclamation from Governor Ige remains in place. And as you also know, it provides law enforcement increased flexibility and authority to close more areas and restrict access on Mauna Kea as law enforcement sees fit to ensure public safety and security. And I'll take questions. Any idea what Gov Governor Ige has been doing since he arrived on the island? I have no idea whatsoever. Is he not going over meeting sheriffs or anything in regard to this uh, demonstration? Again, I don't have any idea about what the governor may be doing today. There's a lot of uh, anxiety, fear, concern, um, several false alarms here because of the perceived threat of law enforcement, perceived threat from the activists here. Uh, there were saying that hundreds of law enforcement officers could converge on here. Can you address those rumors? Well, all I can say is that it's if it's a perceived threat, that's all it is because law enforcement is not here to threaten anyone. Law enforcement is here to provide for safety and security of the protesters, all of you folks in the media, everyone involved in the operation, including the folks that are working with TMT to get the construction equipment up to the mountain. Dan, there had been a question before about the badges on the officers who were here on Wednesday, uh, and I think there are still some questions amongst the people behind us. Can you respond to that? I'm told that each law enforcement agency has their own policy regarding badges, so you would have to contact each of the individual agencies to, to see what that policy is. Dan, did you have a chance to look into the status of Mauna Road and find out where it's closed on the Waimea side? I did. Thanks for asking that. Uh, on the Waimea side, it crosses uh, through Parker Ranch land and DHHL land, and then when it intersects with Mauna Kea Access Road a couple miles up the road here, that may be on DHHL land, but it's obviously closed at that point. So you can't come on to uh, Mauna Kea Access Road. But from Waimea uh, up, it's under county control, and I have not heard from the county what their plans are. But when we checked yesterday, it was still open. Thank you. Dan, can you tell us what's going on every day? There's some water trucks, water tankers come up. Can you tell us what's going on? I believe that's just to restock the, the water tanks at uh, uh, Holly uh, Puhaku. Um, because I don't think they have, you know, a water source up there. And I actually, it's funny you should ask that, because I just noticed this morning the water tanks behind the, the facilities up there, and they have two rather large water tanks, so I think it's to refill those tanks, Dave. Do you know if Governor Ige has any plans to visit the site here? I'm not aware of Governor Ige's plans uh, at all, so I, I can't really answer that. Prior to a couple of days ago, there was still foot traffic allowed up here beyond um, the cattle guard. Uh, can you um, share with everybody who actually made the call to, to stop that? I think law enforcement did, based on the emergency proclamation. It was a law enforcement call, but I don't know which agency. It's a unified command here, so it was likely made by the unified command. Because actually, that was um, that was actually made about uh, two days before the emergency rules, um, but they, we, were, we were informed that there were no longer foot traffic allowed. Um, would that be a Hawaiian home? Uh, yeah, I, I know where people were going. It was on uh, DHHL land, um, so it, it could have uh, been their decision. So I don't know for sure. Lana Keeler will have to get back to you on that for sure. Yeah. What was the actual emergency? There's no hurricane. There's no lava flow. What's the emergency? 
Um, I think that I would rather defer that to the, the governor's office because I, I don't know uh, how they develop that, but it is an emergency proclamation. The way I understand it, it gives the governor broad authority uh, to, to issue these, these proclamations based on something happening now or something predicted in the future. Typically, if there were a violent situation or a riot, then the governor of whatever state that is issues an emergency proclamation. In this case, there was no violence. So again, why would there be an emergency proclamation? I think every state has their own rules, and so I can't address why the governor decided to issue the emergency proclamation. Um, at the first, I guess, meeting of law enforcement uh, coming in to try to remove uh, the Kia'i from the road, they swept them to the side and they were allowed to peacefully remain on the side and only the people across the road were the ones that could potentially be arrested. Does this emergency proclamation now mean that law enforcement has the authority to tell everybody that they now have to leave this area? I, I think uh, apart from emergency proclamation, when a law enforcement officer asks someone to, to obey a lawful order, you should do it. So I, I don't think it requires an emergency proclamation to ask people to to get off of a closed road. And I know in the discussions with the, the, the protesters, um, the, the stance has been you can stand on side of the road and, and show your civil disobedience and, and do peaceful protesting, but you can't be in the middle of this road. But my question is specifically regarding the Department of Hawaiian Homelands property off of the uh, DOT road, off of Mount Ag Mauna Kea Access Road. Could law enforcement force the people who are alongside on the Department of Hawaiian Homelands land to leave the area? Yes, I believe that's true. I think whatever law enforcement wants to do under the emergency proclamation, if they deem it's necessary for public safety, they will take those steps in order to assure public safety. The access road is closed from the cattle gate on, so no one can go up there. But what about behind us? Is that officially closed? Yeah, from the intersection, it's officially closed. We're technically standing on closed uh, land, but we're continuing to have discussions with uh, the protesters, and we want to bring this to a peaceful resolution as soon as possible. And I think everyone's uh, showed a lot of patience, and we would encourage everyone to show a lot of patience. I know that uh, law enforcement is continuing to be very patient, and like I say, to make plans and preparations to to, to move up the mountain uh, when possible. Uh, but again, as we've said all week long, we don't know when that's gonna happen.